Tomcat. Cruz and Katie Holmes were dubbed as Tomcat um, because of their names and what have you. But all of the papers are stacked full of photographs yesterday and more so today. One or two of them were even leading with terrified Katie followed by Cruz spies. She figures now that she has, uh, well, she's been telling her friends that she's being tailed and spied upon and followed by a Church of Scientology spies who want to dig up the dirt on her uh, divorce from Tom Cruise. She really sideswiped him and took him by surprise, filing for divorce uh, only a few days ago, um, up to a week or ten days ago. Cruise, they say, thought that everything was fine. They were hanging out in... It's amazing, actually, because they were hanging out in Scandinavia. They were over in Reykjavik, apparently, together. He's filming some movie. Uh, she obviously knew... Something was going down because she uh, sideswiped him with the divorce, but she kept it very quiet. And then out of the blue, uh, talk about his new movie being called Oblivion. He was oblivious to what was coming down the track, it seems. Um, but it's amazing because his relationships involve Rebecca de Mornay, Amy Rogers, Nicole Kidman, Penelope Cruz. The singer Sher has also stated on numerous occasions that she had a relationship with Cruz in the mid-80s. The papers say that he actually auditioned actresses to become the next Mrs. Cruz. I was reading in the papers this morning. He auditioned Scarlett Johansson, Jessica Alba, Jennifer Garner as potential mates, M-A-T-E-S. Um, his net worth is thought to be in the region of 270 300 million dollars. Um, Katie Holmes' lawyer uh, is known as Mr. Fifty Percent. Uh, the cutty demands for divorcing wives of Wall Street millionaires is fifty percent. She's also, and most importantly, is asking for the sole custody of six-year-old Suri. And the reason being given for the divorce or getting away from the clutches of Cruz is that she doesn't want the couple's daughter Suri raised uh, within the Church of Scientology. On a number of occasions in the past, I spoke with John Dignan, who's the author of uh, The Complex, which is uh, an insider's look at the covert world of Scientology. Um, and he himself actually had the same kind of issues going on in his life when he tried to get out of Scientology and away from their clutches. So I imagine to some extent he can relate to what um, uh, Katie Holmes is going through, and he joins me by phone. John, good morning. How are you, Neil? Are you well? Good. Are you in Cork? I am, I am. I'm in Middleton now. Yes, I moved out here. Um, what, what did you make when all of this got splashed upon the papers over the past couple of days? Well, interestingly, we were at a big con I, was at, I was at a conference in Dublin, which is a whole bunch of um, ex-Scientology people and, uh, who have been, you know, hunted and had terrible experiences in Scientology, um, it was, uh, which we did in the Teachers Club in Dublin. And I was up there when this whole thing broke, which was uh, very... Timely, I must say. Um, but I, but I'll tell you what I make of it, Neil. It's it, 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 uh, everything about what I've read and what I've picked, uh, saw, saw, on, saw on, the, on the media so far completely tracks with my whole experience. Right? And do you think also with the situation that Nicole Kidman found herself in? Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I mean, I mean, obviously, I, I don't know what whatever contracts and deals Tom Cruise made with the various various stars and starlets or whatever. But in terms of um, their anxiety and their fear and their need to um, to get away from Cruz and away from the influence of uh, Cruz himself and the uh, and, and as a direct um, the relationship to that Scientology. Um, when she went, to, I was reading. I read with interest the, the the bit about her going to up to Iceland, right, yeah. and giving no sign of anything going on. So 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 him being oblivious to what was going on, and. Again, uh, she's clearly been planning this for a year. Well, you I don't know. know I don't know how long, but but certainly longer than the last ten or eleven days, anyway. Absolutely, yeah. Since the last uh, well, photograph. Uh, well, well, what I was reading on on, on, on one article, um, I think it was the New York Times one, said that in, in terms of custody for the children, you have to prove res residency in New York. Sorry, in terms of um, the New York. Custody uh, issue, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more likely to give custody to the child. No, but I'm just curious, what would her, what would her issues and fears have been? Because I can see the upside to her very, very lavish and wealthy lifestyle. What would yeah. the downsides have been that would have made her call it a day like so many other women have done? To live in an environment whereby you are watched um, all the time where you have to confess it sounds. I'm sorry, I'm sorry if it sounds outrageous, but this is actually what it's like in Scientology. And, we, and, and Tom Cruise 
does nothing but Scientology. He stated himself, you're not talking to Tom Cruise, you're talking to a Scientologist. He said that in that interview um, that came out there a few years ago. Um, and to do that means that, you, that literally she has to confess on this e-meter thingy, this lie detector thingy, probably every week or so, everything that she's been doing and thinking, in fact. And the people around her and around Cruise are all trained to look for these little... I suppose little ticks that might mean she's kind of, if you like, thinking for herself, maybe, you know, potentially causing trouble for Cruz, you know? So she, 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 she has to take these tests to prove that she stays brainwashed into the Scientology exactly. way of thinking. Exactly, exactly. And, um, uh, and it's a very intrusive lifestyle, um, very uncomfortable. So, so I don't think, yes, she had millions, and yes, she's got beautiful cars and all that kind of stuff, but she didn't actually have a life as far as I can tell. Um, in other words, I, I mean, I'm making that comparison to my experiences within the cult of Scientology and knowing the modus operandi. Um, I am pretty damn sure that her existence was actually quite uncomfortable. And the more miserable she became then, she saw the potential of that misery also affecting Suri Cruz, her daughter. Yeah, but it's, it's beyond just the misery. Um, it's, uh, um, um, Tom is... <laughs> He has to think along the, the lines of any of the kind of, of a religious fanatic. And Tom is a religious fanatic. In other words, or he, he's not interested in Tom Cruise. He's interested in Scientology. And so he, his children... But wait a while. He has to be... be he, yeah, he ha Scientologist. But he has to be interested in Tom Cruise. Otherwise, he wouldn't be living in these palatial ma mansions. I mean, he traveled to Reykjavik in a private helicopter... And it's an enormous helicopter. I mean, oh, he has, course, yeah. he has, yeah. he has serious wealth now, you know? Yeah. Oh, no, absolutely no. I mean, I don't mean he's living a monastic life or anything like that at all. God, no, absolutely not. But I, I think that the main thing about it is the fact that, um, um, he, for the kid, for the kid herself, what Katie Holmes is afraid of, Katie knows how, what the Scientology think is, what the philosophy is. And so she was getting to the stage whereby she's old enough to be able to start studying Scientology in the Scientology school system. Um, oh, the child would go to a Scientologist school. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the whole. Like, probably the one where Will Smith is uh, financing uh, part time. And is there any? Is one there? One so Will Smith is a Scientologist as well. Uh, yes, he's not. He's not been explicit about it, but um, you know, pretty much everything I've seen, he's he's supporting a Scientology school system, and. Uh, and the belief is that from ha from Ron Hubbard, the founder. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong here. Is that Scientologists and everyone in the world who really believes that we are descendant from space aliens? Yeah. But you know, actually, we could be. You know, who's to who's to prove that we never oh, were? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, probably. I mean, the simplest thing is, is that actually, um, uh, yeah, we are actually infested by space aliens. Is another way of saying it. Mm. It's probably more correct. And when? In what way are we in, infested? Um, well, so the, the idea is that you have these spirits, uh, um, these millions that have been distorted. The whole story of Zenu, actually, <laughs> if people are really interested, Google the South Park in the closet of, um, episode, right? And you'll see the whole, the whole philosophy, the, the secret, the secret doctrine of Scientology um, right there on, this, on the South Park episode. But the idea is that there's these multiples of, um, of, um, uh, spirit, of, of spirits, I suppose, the spirits of space aliens, really, that were gathered up under some evil galactic lord and were, uh, I suppose, um, imprisoned on Earth, so to speak. How did and you then, buy into all of that yourself, then? Well, it's not... I mean, obviously, when you, when you walk into the Scientology Centre in the street, you know, if you get approached by Scientologists in the street, which people do, um, that's not the first thing they tell you. In fact, they don't tell you that at all. To get that information, it costs about 35 grand, I think, or something like that. Um, but, you know, you get sold a lot of um, um, quasi-self-help material along yeah, the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you got uh, brainwashed very slowly, wasn't it, over a long period of time? Yeah, and unfortunately, with me and my state of mind at the time, it was actually quite quick. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. A more intelligent or a more, you know, stronger person, it would be a little bit of a slower thing. But for me, it was just a matter of weeks. That was it. Thing. I was, I was a, I was a gone. I was a born again, culty Scientologist, believing in uh, that I actually had lived. Remember, you know, again, these are common enough ideas, but you know that I'd lived many, many lifetimes before, and that I was a member of a. 
um, a, a, an elite space military unit called the Brigade. And mm. um, uh, my job was to, you know, fight to make, to get Scientology used right across the world, the whole planet, so that we can rescue the planet from oblivion. Actually, <laughs> but not, <laughs> but but not anymore now. You 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 you, well, are, no. <laughs> you you know you you're away from it. You're free of it. It's not you're not yes, haunted or hunted yes. by it. Exactly. No. No. Once I escaped their clutches, um, uh, I was hunted down. I mean, they literally they did try to hunt me down, they, and they had people here in Ireland. You know, again, like Katie Holmes is saying, PIs. But I mean, these guys were actual Scientologists. They came, they flown over specially to spy on me and try and get me back. But luckily, I got away from the beggars, and um, uh, yeah, uh, and I just finished. I just finished my uh, degree as a, as a mature student here at UCC, and um, yeah. Um, Do, doing what? Doing well, what, John? I did the Italian. I was just your your Italian man, the the Moroni fellow there. I did Italian language, and I did uh, English literature. Wow, um, English you know, literature. That must have been fantastic. Oh, you've no idea. I mean, Scientology is an intellectual desert. That's the best way to describe it. <laughs> and I, I just felt like I was just soaking up, you know, romanticism, modernism, the Yates stuff, and um, Ezra Pounds, and you know, absolutely beautiful Shakespeare. But, 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 and, that sounds f uh, something that I would I would love to do. I think it would oh, be great to do to do literature and history. I think would be super. But yes. but what, it, it, I often wonder, Scientology would it is it, is it is it a form of a bit like you know the Masons? They all mind each other. They all make shed loads of cash and they share it amongst each other. When we hear of Scientologists, we hear of Cruz and uh, we hear of Travolta, um, all yeah. sorts of weirdness. Yeah, but lots of dosh. It's funny, isn't it? I mean, the whole, uh, unlike the Masons, I think the Masons kind of look out for each other, but Scientology looks out for itself. Like, in other words, the corporation, Church of Scientology International, it is unbelievably manipulative. And again, it's, it's impossible to describe how manipulative it is. And if, like, if you join, I'm telling you one thing, uh, within two or three, four or five years, you would have been fleeced of everything you had. You would your, 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 have made you remortgage your houses and... Uh, you know, whatever. But how come Cruz? How come Cruz hasn't been fleeced of everything he has? Well, because he's got so much bloody money. But but he has donated probably like in direct donations. My estimate, he has donated something in the region of a hundred million to Scientology. And he's probably very powerful in the Scientology ladder too, isn't he? He's kind of, he, it's interesting. He's pretty much number two, which is a complete usurpation of the um, of the structure that I. Um, was trained to understand as it went, and uh, it's been kind of broken. That structure's been broken down. Now it's a dictator, pretty much a kind of a dictator type guy. Who's number one? Called, a guy called David Miscavige. Oh uh, yes, I read that in your book. He's wealthy. Yeah. He's wealthy, isn't he? Oh yeah, well, yeah. When, when, when his when his junior people like like me were earning maybe five quid a week, sometimes three three euros a week in some cases, um, he he gets. The official amount of money that he gets is, 60, is um, 65 grand a year. It, that was in 1993. Um, but then he has private, he's got people, Range Rovers and he's got Maseratis and motorbikes and helicopters and all kinds of stuff. Because he's got to keep up with Tom Cruise, you see. Mm, mm. Tom it's Cruise a, is his real, is his secret weapon, so to speak, he thought. <laughs> do you think, do you think that, that Katie Holmes will stick this out? Um, I think she's got no choice. Um, I mean, what potentially uh, could happen to her? Well, the, I mean, in terms of because she's a high-profile person, they obviously have to be a little bit careful. But I think they're going to go all out on the legal front, and they'll they'll they'll, they'll, they'll try and I mean, basically, what Cruz is going to want and what the bat, what what the battle is going to be. The battle line is going to be around the kid because because she's a wealthy woman in her own right. You know, she's got plenty of money. Um, I don't think she's interested in that. She wants to rescue her child from going through that awful, terrible experience of being a Scientologist. It's, an, you know, it's, uh, again, you have to read a book about it in order to really get, get a concept of how awful it is to be a Scientologist. Okay, okay, um, It's okay. terrible, and um, she is, she's terrified for her child, and okay. I can see that. Appreciate that, John. Best of luck with everything going forward. Thanks for taking the call. Okay, no. Nagman is the author of The Complex, an insider, exposes the uh, covert world of the Church and of Scientology. Uh, best of luck to him. Uh, our lines will stay open at one eight fifty seven one five nine nine six. I'm out of time.